1976 public and episode. Merry Woo. Christmas. And a happy and happy New, New, Year. New Year. What'd you guys get for Christmas? I got a, uh, it was awesome. I got a big bag of coal. Oh, that's, f- uh, come on. I need to not lie. I, I, I converted. I can, uh, who I first would of all, give that to you? Lie. Your parents don't live at your house. Your wife gave you coal. Alex, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You uh, put some pressure to coal. Got yourself a diamond. So Tom basically mm-hmm. has a shitload of diamonds mm-hmm. right now. But I can also heat up my house. I, I got off of got off of electricity. Disgusting, harmful electricity. Disgusting, harmful natural gases. You're sick of and stuff now I'm humming. I'm just using coal. What, yeah, is, what is that humming sound? Just turn off all your electricity. Finally, I can sleep under <laughs> under my house. I have just a furnace, and I <laughs> every once in a while I just sort of crawl into the crawl space and throw some coal in. Uh, you you took the. Uh, the heated driveway technology and put it in your floors and walls. <laughs> I'm thinking about hiring a chimney sweep. Oh, yeah? Just to hang out in my apartment. I don't actually have a chimney. I just want a guy with a bunch of black soot all over him. He's just this normal looking guy that's all clean. You're like, what the fuck? Actually, when, when I got my house, they, uh, they converted the fireplace to electric, but they never cleaned it. And when we got it inspected, they're like, yeah, you need to get like a chimney sweep. Like through here and clean it Fuck. out before you can like have you a fire. Did a chimney sweep and even though you weren't even going to use the I was real like, they fire? Can you do it yourself? I was like, they don't even exist. Uh, I mean, I there's don't like think a big so. brush you can get. It probably depends on how long it is, but I th- I know there are big brushes that you can use to clean it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to buy like a specific. Yeah, brush. it's kind of like yeah, it's probably it. the same amount as just getting a chimney sweep, Sp- spending like a hundred mm. bucks on the 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 twenty foot uh, brush to clean out the chimney. But I have a, a scenario I want you guys to envision. Okay. So okay. you're in your house and you're looking out the window and someone comes along and their dog starts taking a shit on your lawn and you mm-hmm. lean out the window and say, no, don't bother cleaning that up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No, no, really. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. It would be my pleasure <laughs> to clean it up. And they're kind of weirded mm-hmm. out by it. And if they ask questions, you say, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You're like leaning out the window yelling like, hey, no, don't clean that up. Don't! Don't! Don't you dare fucking pick that up. That's my fucking like, snack. Your, that neighbor would, I don't know if they would pick it up or not. They might just walk away, but I guarantee the next day they'd be on like the other side of the road when they walk by. They'd be on yeah. the other side of the street. I think they would, no rather, they would rather pick up the dog's shit than let you eat it. If you told them, I, I don't know. Maybe that would be a good a good way to get people not to leave shit on your lawn. Like if they if you mm. have a neighbor that doesn't pick it up, you run out Just there and say, dog shit "Leave that them? there, leave that there, so I can eat it." I think I, if someone said that to me, I naturally would just be like, mm, "Yummy," and just like not even be <laughs> phased by it. Well, I guess though, like that's kind of nice it. if you care. have a neighbor like that. Yeah, if you have a neighbor like that, then like when I used to take my old family dog on a walk, like he would always have two poops in him. His name's Brian, not Family Dog, dumbass. <laughs> Oh, well, I thought family was, guy, family dog. I it was, yeah, it was family, family dog. Bitch. I thought that was the spinoff. That's Meg. Uh, hey. And so the dog always had two poops. And so I would just be like, all right, let's like, let's schedule this, this little walk in front of our neighbor's house. And then, you know, you can <laughs> oh shit, shit in the yard. That's fine. The guy wants to eat it. He yelled at me. That's he true. wants to eat it the other day. Well, I'm doing my neighborly duty. Well, the guy's going to get fat. No sure. pun intended. He's going to get fat with two poops. He, I don't think he's going to get fat off of the dog. My neighbor. It don't depends think. on the breed. If it was like a Great Dane, I think you could get real obese off eating its shit. No. Especially two like poops per walk. Like a day. Like, if you're talking about four Great Once Dane shits, I think you could start gaining some weight. Depends on what you're feeding it. Like if it's food with a lot of carbs that they're not digesting. Depends how, how many usable think. calories are in the. But then, but then you're not going to digest those carbs either if they're not digesting it because well, little I don't know fat, maybe a second dog pass stomachs, will do it. Dog stomachs and human stomachs are exactly the same. What do both dogs and humans love? Meat chocolate. and peanut butter. Poop. What can't we? What can't we eat? Yeah, chocolate grapes, and tomatoes. Grapes and lettuce. <laughs> tomatoes. That's right. Well, dogs we're not, can we're eat not lettuce. supposed to eat those. Well, they're not supposed. They, well, can, I can't. they can eat it. They can't nah. digest it. They'll throw Tom it up. Tom tells his wife all the stuff he can't have because he's got that dog in him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, I can't they have gave vegetables. me an X-ray. Oh, I can't have that. I'm not allowed to have that. I need. I need meat and grain. <laughs> Fuck. Become a weirdo like that and be like, yeah, actually, my, my canines are actually slightly longer than normal people. I don't know. That's, and there's no there's no lion diet. Now it's a dog diet. And you just get like kibble and bits. <laughs> and you're just posting that. Damn, I just lost 30 pounds on the kibble it's and bits. Bachelor Chow diet. from Futurama. Ooh. <laughs> I've always wondered Fuck. what that would taste like. 
They should sell that like Scooby snacks. They they do sell that. That's just the frozen meals. It's what are those? But it has uh, to be like cereal. It has like to look the, like dog food. It does. Have you ever microwaved one yeah. of those meals? <laughs> we watch JKM. <laughs> we watch JKM. That all looks like dog food. Man, man meals should be like an eleven ninety nine single. It's yeah. like pizza roll where it's just big and nasty. And like <laughs> you have to microwave for like twenty minutes. Inside you, is like are you it's a, like sirloin you eat those steak little ones for babies and mashed or this potatoes. big one for a man. And you can also have like a giant chicken nugget that looks like a cake. Oh, it's so gross. This nasty processed meat. It's all like it's like spongy after you cook it. Yeah, the closest you could good. get to wet dog food would be the Walmart store brand sirloin steak microwave meal. Like the shit JKM mm-hmm. would give a, a ten out yeah. of ten. Mm, no, it's the, it's the stuff that they serve in like hospitals and they call it pepper steak and it looks like cat food. It looks like something Sean's mom would eat. Sean. Meatloaf style stuff or um, <laughs> maybe mommy. spam. If you were eating spam with a spoon, that would I be like kind of like wet dog I could food. Actually, I could eat spam right now with a spoon, even cold. I've never so had it. I don't think I could eat. Uh, fried is really good. I know, I know it's like a camping staple. Huge in Hawaii. Yeah. It's our main meat there because it's like obviously yeah. cheap If you fun. fry it up, it's like it's really good, but... I, I don't think I could eat it cold. I mean, if I had to, if I yeah, if you're like, really hungry and I, bored, and yeah. your wife wasn't it home wasn't for a while, like, yeah, she didn't. She <laughs> couldn't go downstairs and give to. me candy. <laughs> I would eat it like if I had to, like if, yeah, I, yeah, if she, I saw it in my cupboard. <laughs> if like we ran out of chips and there was only just like veggies in the <laughs> fridge. <laughs> oh, you get desperate. You eat all the ranch out of the middle of the veggie tray. <laughs> oh, there's nothing left to eat in this house. Your wife, your wife, bringing that home for a party, and you just it's like she comes back to the fridge and all the ranch is gone. Oh, she puts she puts it out and it's all pulled over and just stuck to the top. And she opens it and there's nothing there and it's all like clearly fingered out. Uh, she, like she like walks in, she walks into my office and like I just have a ranch ring around. Uh, I was dipping cool Honey, ranch uh, Doritos in it. I don't know, but that's I won't go see, that's my, false. My hate for ranch again. I, yeah, I don't like right ranch now. either. Oh, yeah, the, the <laughs> nursing home, ranch. the old I've people. I've come back around to it where I can have it every now and then, but there's just so many mm-hmm. other better sauces out there. Yeah, I never for really sure. have it. I'm not against it, but I'll have like a, a raspberry vinaigrette or an oh, olive sure. oil oh, dressing. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Vinaig- vinaigrettes are my favorite for salads anyway. I like the flavor Yeah, of you ranch. gotta get more flavors. Ranch is so boring. You like the flavor like, uh, yeah, that's what I, I, I get ranch flavored uh, sunflower seeds. I followed a recipe from my Brian Voltaggio cookbook that I got for Christmas and it called for, it was, you know, those like those potatoes that you like mash and then bake so they get crispy on the outside. Yeah. And you, yes. in the, the standing mixer you put in, he makes his own ranch seasoning, but I couldn't find butter <laughs> milk powder at the store. So I just bought like the pre-made mm-hmm. like ranch dressing. And then there's like butter and si- sour cream. I forget exactly mm-hmm. what was in it, but you make it like creamier with the ranch stuff and it tastes really fucking good. Dude, don't leak. Don't leak the recipe. They got yeah, to buy the yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, you got to buy the use book. My, use my Amazon well, affiliate link. <laughs> Sing it, Tiffa. <laughs> but that's the thing is like with like the ranch flavor, like it's actually good. But if you buy just like the generic ranch dressing. Yeah, meat, it stinks. That's just like, yeah, it's just not good. It's like, got to be Newman's own. But if you actually own. have like a, uh, I mean, even Newman's own Hello, is like Newman's. not so good. What's wrong with Paul like, Newman? He's too hot. It's Randy well, Newman's. Well, he's dead. Actually. I don't buy things from dead people. That I, I is get true. Randy, I get Randy Newman's ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Randy yeah, I would Newman's trust him ranch. more because he's fat. True. He would know he looks more. Looks like he likes ranch. Looks like he just dips but, his fingers in it and licks them. It's it's nice to be back. I, I had COVID for an entire week, ten days Ooh, actually. That's good. I heard this. Back. I heard this. This COVID is bad. I heard it feels it's not good. that. My friend at the yeah, COVID store, a <laughs> aka respiratory therapist, told me he's like, "Get your booster, man. This one's not fun." Yeah, definitely get your booster. It, what like I was I was streaming Monday and like we were playing Siege and I was like coughing a bit and I was like ah, I just I feel fine but I'm just coughing. This is weird. And then Tuesday morning I was coughing more and then I had a stuffy nose and I actually found I, I saw on Twitter Twisty mm-hmm. Twisty online post a he COVID, positive COVID. COVID test and. He's had no. He loves yeah. getting the vaccine. Yeah. He's gotten. He's had like twelve vaccines. And then I was like, and he tested positive. And I was like, all right, maybe I'll test. Who knows what's going to happen? And then I did it. And then I was like baking a bunch of stuff. And then all of a sudden I look over and there's two lines. And I was like, oh fuck, I've never <laughs> seen two lines before. And so I took another one. And then I was like, oh shit. And I showed my wife, and it was like, all right, I have to quarantine because I don't want my wife and my baby to get COVID. Yo, and you then should, it you should went sell those to other husbands before holidays. Babies well, I took are kind pictures of immune of it to it, like aren't they? <laughs> uh, well, breastfeeding, it helped. I mean, they can still get it. 
just like the flu. But like if you're breastfeeding, there's a lot of like um like i don't know just like all the nutrition and like uh anti like, yeah it's coming through just the bacterial I'm stuff gonna start yeah exactly breastfeeding. and so you're not supposed yeah, to smoke crack stuff like that because well go you can't you can do that that's you fine. can as long as it's not latched crack. on well it depends on the strain of crack that you actually white, yeah get. if you got white crack yeah <laughs> white crack. so but like tuesday white weed and as soon as i white weed. Was like, my favorite strain of weed is green crack and my favorite strain of crack is white weed <laughs> white weed it's sort of relaxing <laughs> So but Tuesday, like I, I tested positive when I went upstairs to the bedroom and then all of a sudden I was like, I don't feel good <laughs> at all. And I didn't, I just felt like body aches. And then I got a little bit of fever and then Tuesday and Wednesday, I just like laid in bed and like slept and then would wake up. I watched the music man, uh, DJ stream. He did. I don't know why you do that. While you're <laughs> Me <there>. too. <laughs> yeah. I, That's the I, best I, time I to watch it. You have like a fever too. dream. <laughs> Uh, and then I also watched just a bunch of YouTube shorts of like the Peaky Blinders over to like Brazilian funk where like Tommy Shelby badass moments. I'm, oh, Billy Kimber. I made one and of then, those for Hassan that was uh, interstitched with Le- LeBron highlights. And there's a, there's a Chinese <laughs> anthem playing over it, too, with the funk. <laughs> Very cool. That rocks. And so like you just scroll through those and then it's like there's some British guy telling you about Game of Thrones and then you pass out and then you wake back up and you just sort of do it again. Like, I can't do anything. And then I woke up Thursday and I was like, I feel mostly fine, but you're like supposed to quarantine for five days. And so for the next three days, I just stayed in the bed and just played Pokemon (laughs) and completed the decks because I had nothing else to do. Oh, nice. Honestly, those days, those three days, I felt like I was watching movies on my TV, my like. 15 year old TV, 42 inch, but like you can't really see it from the bed because it's like far away and in the corner because we never use it. And we just, I don't, I don't know, I just don't get rid of it. And I was like, well, I guess I can watch stuff on this. And on the like six year old Apple TV we have plugged in on there, we only have access to YouTube and um, Prime because I don't have the passwords to the rest of the stuff because it's all through like different friends and whatever. And so I'm only on Prime and I'm just like watching Jason movies. And I felt like <laughs> Jason because I just had to have my meals delivered. I'm coughing. I kind of feel shitty. I can't leave my room. And it was miserable. I wanted to kill myself. You're sitting there playing with your die. feet like when a toddler learns how to sit <laughs> yeah. up or an infant learns how to Honestly, sit up. Honestly, I'm, I'm in this bed by myself just like rolling around, just trying to have fun. That's <laughs> the worst. Doing anything. That's the worst when you're like start to feel better and you're not just laying there. And you look around mm-hmm. and it's like your nest of trash and you're like, fuck. Man. Yeah. Just like all these tissues from me blowing my yeah, nose. Blowing your load. And hold on. No, oh, okay. Well, you got to do that if you want to get better. Yeah. You got to get the poison out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then like, you know, you're just, you don't feel good. So you kind of like don't want to get out of bed and then don't want to shower. But like you're, I had a fever and so I was like sweating and then I would just wake up and like, I would have like my clothes just be all sweaty and be like. Uh, yeah, I guess I should do something <laughs> like I don't. So you just lay there in your stink and it just reeks and you don't leave. My wife would come in and she'd be like, oh, the room stinks. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know what you expect. And then I had oh, like you should clean it. the I'll COVID. Leave. Man, this actually like I knew I had COVID on Tuesday because after like I tested positive, I also was just shitting my mm. brains out. I just had crazy diarrhea. Oh, nice. It sucked. I've been like intermittently Everybody's sick like, permission. for like six weeks now. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sick, and I got like, called in for work. And then two weeks later, I was like knocked on my ass, and uh, I tried like going in because I didn't want to like seem like a pussy after because I was just gone two weeks ago, and I figured that they're gonna call me yeah. out. And I was like feverish, dying, and went home at nine a.m. and I I told my boss like, hey man, I feel like shit. I'm I'm dying out here. He was like, all right, and this was on a Friday. You better be fine by Monday. And I'm like, okay, I guess I will be. And. Uh, <laughs> Over that weekend, I like I probably shit like 40 times, just diarrhea the entire time. There was like oh, nice. Good, <laughs> good two, nice. <laughs> two and a half days of just being in my bed. Like, I don't think I like got up the entire time that weekend to like yeah. watch TV on the couch. I was just like laid there. And then I went to work on Monday because I didn't want to get fired. <laughs> but then I like felt better again. And now this week I'm like my only symptom is I'm coughing up yellow shit. So I don't know if that's uh residual Ooh, yeah. I, I feel fine I have, like but, pneumonia yeah. or something i'll be on like bronchitis or something sticking yeah around. i mean i mean i guess i could go to the doctor but who's got time for that yeah 
Do you, Steve, call your. Do you have like a PCP? I have like a. I have a general physician. Dude, yeah. that's gonna make it like worse. He's doctor. gonna start hallucinating. You can't smoke it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just tell him to call in a fucking antibiotic or something. Be like, I know I need something. I don't yeah, know. it's it's it's, but, it's weird. Uh, yeah, I feel I like know. good, but like I just get yeah. to like cough up some funny stuff every now and then. Like, Ooh, that one's kind of. You chunky. tried like a, a, a humidity diffuser inhaler type thing. Oh yeah. Like inhaling a bunch of humidity. Humidifier. Yeah. Maybe I should start showering. That could work. When I had bronchitis, they gave me one of those things, I think. It was like a, a humidifier that you put on your face and you like it's concentrated vapor. It's probably just farts for you. Yeah, it was probably farts or pee pee or poo poo. <laughs> I the, I when I uh got sick a couple times this year, like my asthma came back and I had to get it like an inhaler that like anytime I get sick and get a cough, like my cough like what, when I got sick in May, my cough lasted until like June, and I was like, "All right, I should go to the doctor." Bro, I just, like, yeah, we'll just give you an inhaler, and they just went away right away. So they just, it's just like on standby anytime I need it. That would be such a way to ruin someone's place: pee in a humidifier and turn on and leave. <laughs> oh yeah, they would come back to like layers of pee on everything. Ooh, it smells good. They would never get rid of that pee smell. It'd be so <laughs> nasty. Ugh. Well, what kind of pee are we talking? Are we talking like a high ammonia? Pee that looks Ooh, like uh, if you drink it, you get rid of your dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> pee looks like Tamiflu. <laughs> well, because also we had to, we drove up to Ohio for Christmas. Uh, so that's like a nine hour drive with stops with a baby. And I, had, I wore a mask in the car the whole time. And my parents were like, you need to come. Oh, you should come up. You should come up. And like, we were supposed to go up earlier, but we ended up driving on Christmas Eve. Um, and so I just wore a mask until Thursday, just mostly because I just didn't want to get the baby sick. I didn't care about anybody else. Yeah. If I didn't have a baby, I wouldn't even like wore a mask around the house or yeah. done it. I didn't, even I didn't if get it's shit. not bad, you just you feel bad. You never want to. Yeah, do that. exactly. And I was just like, no, I never want to get my baby sick. Why um, not? By it, and you know, good question. It builds character. I had it when I grew so, up. But this, this, this is this is legitimately insane about my parents that I found out. So they had a ring installed. And for the most part, my parents are very normal people. Uh, they don't really like buy into a lot of like, you don't like, you know, when you like think about boomers, or you talk about boomers and like, they just do such boomer weird things. And you're like, it just doesn't make sense. Most 99% of the time, they avoid all of that. However, since having this ring installed, it allows you to choose your doorbell sound, right? Uh, and we were very surprised when someone clicked the doorbell to drop off a package that all of a sudden you heard just like three barking dogs extremely loudly all throughout the house. And they don't have any dogs right now. And apparently they changed the doorbell ringing to be just loud barking dogs because they think, well, that might scare anybody away who's trying to break in. Oh my God. But also, but like, so putting aside the fact and anybody trying to break in wouldn't ring the doorbell. No. Right? <laughs> and right. they would uh, see the ring camera and be like, yeah. oh, I'm on camera. Yeah. And also uh, the dogs wouldn't start barking the moment you pressed it. Yeah. And then also stop after like 10 seconds. But it is 10 seconds of the loudest dogs barking. And we it just couldn't get used to it. And it just kept scaring my wife every time someone <laughs> rang the doorbell because we just weren't expecting it. Yeah, and like, are there it, dogs just, in here? Legitimately insane. It's like the bumpest of dogs getting in in a Christmas story. Can you put just any a sound? pack of wild dogs in the I, house? I don't know all if of you sudden. can put any sound. I mean, I, I assume maybe you could upload your own sound. You know, be that'd be great. It probably be a comes really with annoying the app. one. It'll yeah, be a really annoying one. The iPhone like alarm sound. That hates the most. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, that, crazy frog Axel F. I, yeah. I mean, hey, that'd be great, but the the whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing, you have to let it play. I think it's a really good bit by your parents. Yeah, I mean, it's it kind was of funny. very funny. It's very funny because, uh, like, the one day this I had one. to run to the store to pick some stuff up. Shit. No. Can't. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the days I like when I actually tested negative, I had to run to the store and pick a couple things up. I was getting beer to bring back home and some other things, and. I just get this text from my wife. The doorbell just scared the hell out of me. The baby was sleeping. The baby woke up. And I'm just like, well, that's Fuck. honestly kind of funny. <laughs> what are you going to do? I don't know. I, I, I mean, like I told him, I was like, change it. It sucks. But if I can't actually change it myself, they're not going to change it. So it just, what, you should just legit, text him when you get so there. It's so insane. 
or knock. I would start knocking. Well, we never like my. I mean, yeah, you don't really need coming, a doorbell. So they leave their, like you just knock. They keep the door open. Like, like if they know people are coming over, they keep like the main the storm doors closed and the main doors open. So you just walk in, and they like greeted us outside when we arrived because they're excited to see the baby. Um, so like I, we didn't know it until someone came over and for some reason they rang the doorbell and then it, you just hear all of these dogs barking so loudly and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Probably scares cats. I always <laughs> tell my parents if I'm coming over. So I never knock. I just walk in. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do. We, like, like we're, we're just, we're just walking. I just watch sitcoms and be like, nobody just walks in without knocking. And then I became an adult. I'm like, ah, yeah. Usually mind. you hear the car doors close. Yeah. When I lived That's in Akron, enough. like. They only ever use the garage anyway, so it just if they, you heard the garage, oh, someone's coming. Classic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to have to sneak out of my girlfriend's garage, her parents' garage, jump over the laser while it's closing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. a great move. I love that move. When I lived at home and we had we only two cars in the gra- uh, garage, so I had to park in the driveway or the street. And There's a lot of good fails <laughs> of that, of people trying to jump over their laser while they're closing it and just getting clotheslined by the door. <laughs> great. They're just unathletic. They don't know how to do it. I think what I would do is get a pack of six German shepherds and mm-hmm. then make the doorbell a dog whistle. Oh, okay. So when you ring the doorbell, it actually makes the dogs go crazy. Oh, wow. Life hack. Yeah. You just, yeah, you just, uh, you just leave them in the garage. <laughs> yeah, you keep them all in a cage. In, in one yeah, crate. In the garage. My, my crate of dogs It's like a Cerberus crazy. with six heads. They're all in the same crate. <laughs> Ew, you leave all your dogs and in the garage. And they guard, they guard like- my garage. You leave all your dogs in the garage, but have like the garage to house door open. It's just a baby gate there. It smells like <laughs> shit all the time out there. <laughs> Nasty. You squeegee the poop out once a day. You're just in the driveway. Yeah. You just spray it down. You open the garage door and spray it down with a hose. Anytime you give pets free reign of a room, it's going to smell like that. Well, especially multiple. Yeah. It's like yeah. when you have a litter of barn kittens. <laughs> you better contain them right away. You're going to have fucking cat pee and shit everywhere. I smell like a barn That's- cat. <laughs> I've been purposely Bro, making my myself parents smell used to like literally a barn say cat. that when one of the kids stunk. You smell like a barn cat. <laughs> or just simply I mean, a barn. I'm not ready for that too because uh kids stink. My daughter can stink sometimes if I haven't been Yeah, and she's not like, even, she's not even to the stinky poop age yet. No, she's not. The worst she's not is even when to they stink start anything. To have, like normal adult yeah. poop. She hasn't even eaten hot wings or beer. <laughs> well, she has. She has eaten hot oh, wings. Okay, that's good. Cool. We got started with that. That's what that's what they recommend as your first meal for an infant. It's hot wings and beer because it's the healthiest thing you can eat. It should be your first meal and your last meal. <laughs> Tom had one of those "It's a Girl" cigars. He was supposed to smoke with the guys. He just sat in the room with with her, with his <laughs> wife and the baby, smoking it, blowing it in her face, <laughs> smoking the wrong she end. She took a puff. I fucking love you, baby. <laughs> Just putting the soggy, the disgusting soggy part in her mouth. Putting it up, on the, go. Putting it up on the table next to your wife's like food tray. <laughs> it's just in the hospital tray. Talk so about nasty. nasty smells. That's mm. right. I am one of those uh, cigar guys, <laughs> whiskey and cigar guys. <laughs> Michael Post. I chew on it. I chew I on the cigar. I double pan. XL. My neck is thicker than my All head. of those guys have the fucking SpongeBob uh, measurements. They're all like 56 waist, 28 <laughs> inseam. <laughs> It's so cool. Uh, I love them so much. Just posting the grossest. You know what the greatest thing about them uh, is though? They're like a, they're like a group chat type situation, but mm -hmm. they all meet up. They do like one trip a year, and they're just Twitter friends. It's so funny, so awesome. It's nice. Just all of these. They they look like the fucking uh, that GTA Four video where the guys are going, "Ow!" (laughs) I think there was a Patreon request we watched once where. It was all the cigar guys, and they were in some giant dining hall, and they started at the same time, and it was like a race to see who could finish the cigar first. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. That's and so it must nasty. have been the stinkiest room of all time. Those people are so fucked. Man, racing to finish a cigar. <laughs> they're also, they're also, they're like the guys that are like, you can tell they have a lot of fun drinking and just being drunk, but they make mm-hmm. like 20-year-old decisions where they're like, uh, one of them's like a fucking FedEx driver and he's like I got work in four hours but I just opened another bottle and post like his whiskey bottle like $120 bottle I'm like Jesus fuck man why it's are you doing fucking number morning. shit let alone bragging to, about you it you have to drive around that is Jeff shit you have to drive around the hilly part of Philly <laughs> and delivering <laughs> packages you want to be out there in the morning like Ugh. that's crazy to me well he's having too good of a time yeah I don't know we've how you do been that there. we've all been there in our 40s our late 40s 50s stinking like shit. Half those guys did not like, even, they they didn't even tweet all weekend because of the fucking Eagles. 
Oh man, they're all so they're great. all Eagles fans except the ones the Giants fan. He told them all fuck yourself and they're sorry. Like, I've been in the hospital because I climbed up a light pole and then it went up my ass and they had to get a crane and pulled me off of it, but it felt good. He climbed up a light pole and it bent down and made like a bike parking. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I climbed a telephone pole and got electrocuted. Hey, the, speaking of Philly fans, they'll eat poop. Oh yeah, they will. Remember that guy? That was Cleveland. Oh, really? Oh, no, I guess no, they did it in Philly, too, didn't they? Original was It's probably Cleveland. happened with every team at least once. But I'm just thinking of the, the most recent one that was the Philly fan. I think I guess Philly, Philly is Philly. the one that, that comes to mind. Because Cleveland did it in 2016. There was that guy that ate that horse poop. Maybe I'm thinking <laughs> of that one. <laughs> why, the, why was there a horse? Well, because they have like co- police like horse cops. Why, yeah, the, why are there police so the, horses in Cleveland? They have been every Yeah, what, uh, what yeah. is the fucking point They're of like that? Mostly. Like, I thought maybe it was just a Canadian thing. Do they, do they thing really? Because they have like, police horses? They, Mounties, have, them, they but... have police horses in Athens, Ohio. Yeah, dude. They fucking, if they, if they can have the budget, they'll do it. And they bring them out for riots and shit. Riots and parades. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, Ohio University, Athens, Ohio, very small town. You wouldn't even fucking notice it on the map. But, like, again, home to the university. Their Halloween party is, like, one of the biggest in the United States. You just have this mass amount of people come in yeah these are the like horses they have, are kettling yeah they have uh horse cops there and the one time i was there some guy was like super wasted and he like started pat, like <laughs> going to pet the horse oh, and the cop the cop just banged like just banged his fucking stick against his head and the guy oh, just God. fell down and his friends carried him away and you're just like all right don't fucking touch God the horse. damn six. why I even bring the get, horse out the cop was like i don't want him to get kicked in the head is it yeah it's so is weird. it like they want to like be up high <laughs> things so they can like see over top of people yeah yeah well it's it's be up high intimidation and like the now if someone gets touches my horse i get to really hit him <laughs> And those horses go through uh, special courses where they do uh, bomb proofing, mm-hmm. where they basically set off explosions near them, and the horses don't jump and shit. And you can search books right now on Amazon how to de- how to bomb proof your horse. Hmm. There's like three Ooh, of them. Okay, I should do that with my cats. There yeah. is still like the the connotation that it's an air, uh, aristocratic thing. Yeah, I think there's like that the cavalry. Too. Like you're like Robert E. Lee with his horse, his trusted steed. At the uh, the pro Palestine marches that I went to, there's a bunch of fucking cops on horses. Like we, they knew what our path was going to be because there's like a police liaison yeah. with the organizers or whatever. And then they just like where traffic would be, they just had the fucking horses. Bro, at out. least in Canada, it makes sense to ride horses. The mounties, you're dressed right? like you're yeah. supposed to. Yeah, you're wearing English riding pants and the fucking hats and the. But like in in uh, Calgary, we have up. our own private police force. Because you don't have to have RCMP mm. in your city. So a right, few cities right. um, don't have Mounties, usually the bigger Hell, ones. Even horse, horse caps just make more sense in a place like Calgary. That's like having them in Nashville. It's yeah, like, okay. like we have signs downtown yeah. where like, the guy crossing <laughs> the streets wearing a cowboy hat. Like it's, it's part mm. of our culture. So that's why I was surprised like it, they're, they're there in Ohio. East side Detroit and parts of New York City, they should have cops on dirt bikes. Yeah, that'd be way sicker. That'd be fucking sick. I want to see robot horse cops. Are the so well, let me right? ask you Seth this. Green. Let me ask you this. Are the are the cops the robots or are the horses the robots? The horse is the robot. Oh, that's cool. Okay. It's like in Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those type of things, and you can ride mm-hmm. it. What if what if instead of horses they had in Horizon Zero Dawn one of those like big like dinosaur ones with like the long neck you have to climb up? As long as it's not the chicken one where you shoot it and it makes the loud noise, those ones are scary. Mm-hmm. Okay. The ones that are like the rooster. Mm. But everything, and everything else in that game is pretty good. What about some cops with those suits where they have wheels all over them, where they can just fall and roll? Ooh. Those are cool. Those guys go, like, what downhill. If, what if they gave, uh, instead of a gun, they gave cops a Pokemon, and, like, they could oh, okay. summon a Pokemon, and, like, well, and that's speaking how they of that, crime. What, what I was thinking is, if, if a cop's allowed to ride a horse for, like, his job, he shouldn't get a gun. The horse that's should true. be, like... Yeah, you should get a lance. Yeah, you can get a lance or something. Bow and arrow, a big rubber lance. You just fucking big <laughs> <laughs> non-lethal yeah, lance. It's got like a, it's got a flat front on it. It's just rubber. <laughs> it's a plunger. <laughs> that would be really funny, actually. A plunger would work well because you see someone committing a crime. You drive by with your lance and you just pick them up. If I saw a cop horse trying to kettle people in a riot, 
I would tie a rope to two cinder blocks and then trip it like the ATATs on Rogue Squadron. <laughs> now, you go, run around it. Yeah. Run around Yeah. It I'd run around with my friend and we'd both be screaming like we're in the jet. The... <laughs> <laughs> so cool. It would be so easy to kill a horse. Yeah, Chet. You think? Guys, say this for when Chet's on. Yeah, yeah I know. Cool Chet's got to be on for this. He's going to be I excited. Actually, to I hear think that. he would come face to face with a horse and not have the courage to I kill it. I love horses, and like every other animal, I don't think they should be made into cops. They can do other work, but just don't. Yeah, it's not fair. It's it's not probably nice isn't to fair to discuss when Chet's not here, but what was what, what is, what is the hate for horses? Because you see a horse in person, this is a big, majestic animal. That's like a cool beast that's friends with you. I like to tease Chet and say it's his uh, birds don't exist thing. Oh, yeah. That's, I said he's just, mm. trying, he's just trying to be edgy and epic, and he gets mad. <laughs> Maybe he had a, I think I he just know. doesn't trust him. Like, horse, horse girls were kind of irritating growing up. It was a little bit lame, but, like, I don't... I, I'm kind of ambivalent about him, I guess. We had, like, one horse girl, but, like, she was just quiet, and, like, so... It was just, I had like, a ton of horse girls deal. around me. A lot of them are my friends, though, too. Like, I didn't go to... Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have to go to school with them, so I didn't have that dynamic where I hated them for being, like, the popular girls. All my friends were outside of school, so... Different for me. Yeah. But I lived in the richest county in Michigan, but, like, in the country part of it, like, the northern part, mm -hmm. where it's all just farms but it's everyone that lives on these farms drives like a eighty thousand dollar pickup and the house itself is like worth a ton and we had our shitty 880 year old house down the street <laughs> Woo! So i obviously grew up around a lot of uh well all types of farmers mm -hmm. so I, I don't really like there's this there's more like farmer girls that were also like into horses but they also like wore car hearts every day and like were in like yeah. would talk about how they had they were up at 3 a.m. helping their cow give birth and shit. So they retired at school that day. Uh, did you guys see on this note the article about the girl and her fucking goat in the 4-H club? And I think it was Northern California. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. where they they were gonna have the goat slaughtered, and then they changed their oh, mind yeah. and they like sent the that cops. Story. That was that was so weird. Was oh yeah, yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucked up. No, they fucking. But also, the parents are fucking stupid for for bringing that to the fair. It's like that's what they do. Yeah, well, like that that's the whole point of 4-H is like teaching you like farming's good, and these animals are just like here yeah. for us to eat, and this is how they get eaten or whatever. And so they're just going through like the. The, the normal process of, of 4-H or whatever, where you get, like, a baby goat and then you can auction it off. And, uh, yeah, it got auctioned off to some, like, rich jackass. There, there was, like, an owner of some big business or something. And when I read this story, I was like, mm -hmm. what does this person want to, like, slaughter a goat for? Um, yeah, it can't be that good. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like goat. I think we've talked about this recently, right? I think it's too gamey. Uh, that's the yeah. weird thing it's like um, it's not bad are people like, starving um, that badly that we need to eat this one goat like can we eat literally anything else if i heard somebody in california wanted to ki kill a goat i would think it's for like a ritual yeah well mm -hmm. like any at any rate like they sold it and then the girl kind of realized like oh man they're going to kill my little buddy like can we like not sell it to them and uh like the transaction hadn't gone through yet and they're like you know what we're going to keep the goat and then, like, the cops came and took her goat away, and they killed it the next day. <laughs> yeah. Which is, like, also, like, it, very illegal, apparently. Um, yeah, because they didn't actually have, like, a, a real... Yeah, there wasn't, like, a so real weird. bill of sale or whatever. So now they're, like, cops suing the police what? that... Yeah, the cops just completely yeah. jumped the gun on that for no reason. Well, they had a chance to make a little girl's life yeah. miserable and kill something, so Wait. they were fucking jumping on yeah, that. Yeah, they had the chance to be the villains in, like, Babe. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we stayed with my grandma for a little bit while we were waiting for our house to be ready, when we, right when my dad got out of the Air Force, and there was a canal across the street from her, uh, and we went behind her neighbor's house one day because we heard this commotion, and there was a deer that had been hit on the road that runs adjacent to the subdivision. And he jumped over the fence and then immediately like fell into the canal and he had like a broken leg. So he was just kind of swimming in a circle, very like the most pathetic thing mm -hmm. you've ever seen. And uh, he got sort of close to shore and this cop that was there, like was just, he's going to put him out of his misery. What else do you fucking do? You know, things in the water. Mm -hmm. And right when he's about to shoot him, this fucking boy scout dives in front in the water, like in front of the deer. And he's like, if you shoot him, you got to shoot me too. <laughs> and his, his dad's like, get your fucking ass out of the water, you dumb motherfucker, or something like that. <laughs> and the kid just crawls out, and the cop just domes the deer, like, still Jesus. Running. The kid's standing there. And then uh, my it. uncle Jimmy butchered it, so it didn't go to waste That's or good, at yeah. least. It was the middle of the summer, we had some venison, it was kind of cool. But <laughs> deer Jesus are pretty Christ, fragile. man. Yeah, it, 
I felt so. That was, I was like nine or ten. That was one of the most mm-hmm. fucked up things I've ever oh seen. Oh, my God. Deer just almost drowning. They're getting shot in the head. Yeah, I drove past one that was like in its death throes once. Mm-hmm. Horrible. <laughs> Not my problem. And I stopped, and then there was like someone else there, and I asked them, and they said they already called, and there was a animal control coming or something. And there was a part of me that was like, I want to get a knife and just stab it in the throat. Because mm-hmm. it's like so in pain and from well, me, done, but like, also I would be covered control. in blood and it, you know, I don't. Yeah, would well, that guy have done? You're if, on your like, own. If that guy's like, I just called animal control and without saying anything, you just pass by him and like pull this knife out of your boot and just fucking go <laughs> yeah. and slit its throat, bleed it yeah. all over don't the road. Worry. You, you can call him and take out a shotgun and just blow its brains tell, out. <laughs> tell him it's fine. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Animal control. Wait, what, what would that guy do if you walked up and you pulled out this crumpled up picture of a deer and you matched it up with that deer and then took out a gun and just fucking shot it in the head? <laughs> this deer killed my father. <laughs> he would have been so weird out for the rest of his life. This, you this didn't even man, know it was there. You just happened to drive his by. Car, yeah, pulling out a picture of the deer. It's the same one. It's like, yep. Fuck. Taking a trophy from it. That's an Adam Sandler <laughs> plot right there, man. Slicing <laughs> off of <laughs> an antler. No, we're not. Chubbs. You took his hand. They do. Oh, I mean, dear dude just love to run into the road. I and mean, granted, we put the road in the way. But oh my God. I feel so they bad love for the deer in my area. It's like we got rid of the fucking, wolves. Everywhere the deer have to go it keeps disappearing here. Mm-hmm. There used to be wolves and coyotes and all that stuff. Hey, wolves everywhere. are being reintroduced to a lot of places, like including North Carolina. They, they introduced a bunch of coyotes in Akron and like they just infested the. Awesome. <laughs> the park killed everyone's small and, like, animals. You'll like walk around and like with if you have a small dog, like be careful. Just stalking you. <laughs> just be careful. Well, you should be careful anyway. You shouldn't. You gotta be. Yeah, I know. It's just like, well, you didn't have to think about it. Now it's like, well, I think I mentioned that before. I found, a, I found a dead coyote the first day we were in Texas. We moved there. Mm-hmm. I went, walked out in the middle of this field. I'm like, what's that? And I walked way out, and just staring. We don't at this have thing. anything. We don't have anything dangerous. The most dangerous predator we have in my neighborhood is you. me. And then after yeah. that, I already beat you. I already beat you. Fuck you. And then it's, uh, we have a lot of hawks that fly around, but like, they're fine. I mean, they just get like small it's like, critters. It's yeah, like they could probably that. get a chihuahua, a big enough hawk. Yeah. Did you see that video of the, the hawk landing on the windshield? And there's a kitten like on the, on oh, the yeah. dashboard of the car. Yeah. Oh, oh my and God. And the hawk like thinks he's going to get it and he's just confused <laughs> and the, the cat doesn't even know what's going on. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch for hawks. We have a shit ton of cats around. I, I adopt not enough one. hawks, I guess. <laughs> and well, we have tons of hawks, and the cats are just strong, and they they hide really well. Apparently, yeah, they get fat, so they can't get picked up. True. <laughs> we have tons of rabbits. That'd be hilarious we if have, a hawk um, picked a cat up. He's too fat, and he's like, nope, just dropped him for like twelve <laughs> nah, feet. That sucks. How is that? Because we we have like a couple of neighborhood strays that I see around from time to time, and they're all mm-hmm. fat as fuck too. Like, what what are they eating? You know where They're they go. They go to every people. old lady's uh, sliding yeah. door. Okay, and goes, yeah, okay. Because I can promise yeah, you, I is. can promise you. So the photos of Kiki in May and June when we first got her, she is like skinny and slim. And now you see her, she is fat as fuck. She's not even fat. She's just fluffy and just she looks like a like a normal well fed mm-hmm. cat. And today, what she decided to do was uh, uh, finally jump into the tree and knock it down. Oh, oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> the tree we've been <laughs> been fucking delaying taking down because we've been exhausted and tired. We came, we drove back on the thirtieth, had a wedding on the thirty first, still tired on the first, and then like we've just been busy, and so we're like, okay, we're gonna take the tree down busy, busy, busy on, on Friday, here. And busy then on Sunday. here, busy on here. And uh, today I was working out in my office and my wife just sends me a text and it's just Kiki in the tree, in the middle of the tree. Just like all you see is her white body and fluffy just sticking out of the tree. And then five minutes later, she sends me another text and it's the tree on the ground. Oh my God. And like just ornaments everywhere. So I had to go down and like, cause she was breastfeeding my daughter. And so I had to go down and like pick everything up and I had to vacuum. She broke one ornament. It was an ornament my mom gave us for her wedding. So my wife was more upset and I was like, whatever, we can buy a new ornament. I don't care. But everything was fine. But it's just like, you know what? Now, like, our tree is just, like, crumpled over because one of the parts came out. And it's just like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to put it away. Right now, it just looks depressing. Cats are Grinches. She is. No one is more likely to knock over a Christmas tree than a cat. I've seen big dogs. Stella would do that. Stella would never do that. Because they're too excited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My parents' dog, like, you couldn't put anything at tail level. Because he'd be just wag it yeah. so much, Aww. and it would just knock it all down. I, I can already tell my mom, my my parent, my parents have that little black lab puppy. Yeah, he's already so well trained; it's crazy. Mm-hmm. He's like little floppy eared 
I don't even know how old, 12 weeks now or he's something. A and he's just, he'll be spazzing out, but the second you're like, sit, he's like, <laughs> really, really obedient. But he's that kind of dog I can tell where he's going to be this big, giant, pure muscle, but he can jump and spin <laughs> in the air when he's excited. Our, our old black lab would do that. He'd get all, he's way too big for that man. He gets mm-hmm. air and moves in the air. Yeah, you're next yeah. to him, you get like, fucking knocked over. Stop. <laughs> yeah, you're like 60, 80 pound dog. It's a toddler knocker. <laughs> you just like jump into you. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't let your, don't let your do, kid man. that just learned how to walk be walking across the lawn when the dog's <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah, they'll <laughs> just know, tackle I the love kid those videos. So so they just run by. Oh, they're, they're so boom. funny. I, fucking uh, rugby, people would take their dogs to like hang out on the field or like, be, leash them up and tie them to a tree or whatever just so mm-hmm. like, they'd get be outside and shit and sometimes like they wouldn't be on leash and we were doing this like running and like passing drill and i wasn't paying attention and this dog just like ran straight between my legs and fucking tripped me over i got tackled by a dog it's like a grown-ass man doing rugby training it's very funny it's such a a a funny physical comedy thing i remember being a kid and my dad would trip over the cat and be all pissed off Mm -hmm. and i would be like trying not to laugh like it's not funny everyone's pissed off he could have gotten hurt but it's just because like it, the the natural reaction is to be pissed off, but you're pissed off at a dog or a cat, mm-hmm. and there's yeah. no way to get it across that they tripped you. They, well, once, they just I, don't know how that works, because they can't trip. Once we figured out that we could put our dog into, like, when we play, we, like, we'd just be throwing the football around, and once we figured out our dog could tackle for you, basically, because he'd be chasing the ball, mm-hmm. and whoever receives it, the dog just runs into or trips also. It was, it was so good seeing somebody get tripped by a dog, so I love it. They should do that in the real the, games. I'm, they do. They, they've tried before. Didn't <laughs> they Cleveland let dog have the ball the, uh, dog? Yeah, Air Bud. Air Bud Cleveland played football the, one year. Cleveland had the dog that put the T out, right? Um, it was well, God, who was that fucking dog? A few years ago, I think when Haslam bought the team, they tried to roll out like a dog mascot, and like I think he just died. <laughs> they just like kind of pulled himself. away. He hung himself Bullshit. On his leash. My my cat always tries to trip me in the kitchen. Stella will just like come right behind me. And like just beg for treats and then like I'm cooking or doing dishes and I like go to back up and I hit her. And so instinctively, like I try to like adjust so I don't step on her and crush her spine and kill her. And then she just kind of runs Bro, away. You're almost going to uh, have that house that I grew up in where you have the little baby walking around and you bump them and you oh, gotta go, oh, and you grab their big head to stabilize them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, but the then Hudson Kiki, toddlers. <laughs> Kiki, she hides under our couch and you'll like walk up to the couch. And like my wife is like, oh, can you like give me a water? So I like get her water and I walk up and I deliver it. All of a sudden, my foot is like at the base of the couch. And then I just get this white claw <laughs> stabbed into my foot. And I go, oh, fuck, God damn it. And like, it doesn't hurt. That's the hurt white claw you ordered right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dang. It doesn't hurt necessarily, but it takes you by surprise. And it is a little bit of a claw. But she's like more gentle because she had kittens and she like knows how to scratch. So like she so doesn't funny. like she's like, all right, just let me let me go like low mode on this one. And she'll like get you and it just gets you by surprise and you know it. Or you're like hanging out on the couch and you like put your arms up on the back of the couch and then all of a sudden you just feel yep. right on your hands, right on your arms, just Fucking a little scratch. Bastard. Just like, oh yeah, fuck you. I love that. And what are you gonna do about it? Nothing. You can't do anything about it. You gotta grow your nails out. Well, that's true. I'll scratch her back. Don't worry about that. You just run the vacuum, so she runs away and hides. My cat Dolce will, like, if she's, like, having the zoomies or whatever, she'll kind of spaz mm-hmm. out and wrestle your arm. But the second she actually, like, bites flesh, she gets so grossed out, she's always like, <laughs> and fucking has to retreat to her bed and just sit there like, Ugh, nasty, nasty, nasty. My cat France, so just, she does, like, the same thing where she'll, like, wrestle your arm like she's attacking you, and then she'll do, like, a, mm-hmm. the lightest bite in the world and start licking mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Every time yeah. it like turns into I mean, a they can't tell the difference. It's simulating like fighting their siblings. Yeah. You know? that's, what, mm-hmm. that's all they do. They wrestle and just start cleaning each other. Our, my cats are finally like, sitting next to each other, like when they're just chilling. Hell yeah. Like that's on the cool. same on the same cushion and stuff. It's taken three years for that. Yeah, we're still doing introductions and it's been May will be a year. Um Dolce but, stopped like, randomly we're just peeing. Trying to be careful. That's nice. good. Also after three years, like she really <laughs> almost stopped, but then she would start again and get moody and mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Territorial cats shit. Cats are Cats are so fucking annoying. I, I love them. I Another love them thing so I've much. been thinking about is visiting someone's house for the first time and asking them, first thing, where's the cat's litter box? <laughs> and when they ask why, I just say, I don't know. <laughs> None of your business. I want to eat the eggs. And, and they don't know if you're going to try and pee in there or if you're going to eat the cat's poop. You, you're going to eat the eggs a, in even there. Even on a less bizarre but still a weird thing where like they go to work the next day and talk about it. Immediately when you walk in, you throw your coat down their, what do you assume is their basement door, then ask them where the garbage is. 
<laughs> no explanation. Hey, where's the garbage? Have this handful of garbage from your car. Just random, like, <laughs> strong like, and shit. A bunch of shopping bags, a bunch of McDonald's bags full of oh, garbage. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> they're like two Wendy's house, bags. Walk in their house with just one Kroger bag that's all full of like fast food cups where you could barely pinch the handle shut and say, where's the garbage? <laughs> Bring it into their house. Hey, where's the washer and dryer? <laughs> Staying with somebody for like a weekend, but you like only drive an hour there and you have like all your trash. <laughs> oh, yeah, got this on the road. <laughs> Holy fuck. Ask if you can use like their vacuum and stuff in the garage. <laughs> I have a question about you Yo, guys. Where's the trash. lawnmower? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I've even been in Michael's house and I, I don't remember. Do you do the under the sink or do you have a little trash can? We have a trash can. It's a trash can. We have a we have a trash can now because we have too much. I grew up with under the sink. But, under uh, the our, sink. Under the though, sink. You already knew I grew up with a fucking giant trash can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our, yeah that makes we got so our friend, one of my friends moved and he got rid of his trash can. And his trash can is motion censored, so he gave it to us. And it's just a giant can. That's all so my bad nice because I just put it's little. I wave my hand over it and I can just dump like Does food it work? Into it. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. works real I well. had a friend that had one of those. And it was a piece of shit that never fucking worked, and I always had to use the foot pedal instead. The bathroom one's so awesome. This does not have a foot pedal. I like the bathroom. There's one no backup. Like, you don't touch anything. Yeah, no, something yeah. I've been thinking about is like I think no matter how much money I acquire, or how nice of a house I can eventually live in one day, I'll always have a trash can that's outside of the sink. I hate yeah. looking for My, it, <laughs> and it's too damn yeah, small. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, and, it's and also it's hard me, to put stuff into it. Like if I don't know certain things, if it's a if it's a short sink, mm-hmm. might be hard to wedge stuff in there. You have friends or relatives with compactors, and they're like, "Yeah, just it looks like you're dumping your trash in like a cabinet." <laughs> I always hated. Yeah, that I, had, I had relatives no. who had only it one. Looked, it looks like only you're one porn. person actually. You know the uh, you know the cabinet that'd be next to like the outer side of a dishwasher that you put like pans and shit mm-hmm. in, a little skinny one. It would yeah. pull out like that. So it looks like you're just pouring all your food tr- and shit <laughs> I, into there. And then you push it shut and it would crush it. I think TV and I sitcoms made so cool. me think I was going to run into a lot more trash compactors than I actually did. Yeah, cartoons they're, would always get stuck in it and they're get like a turned Mc, into they're a like box. A, they're super mcmansion Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, a, I mean, a certain type of like 90s, 2000s luxury house. Houses built in like 2003 that were Like fucking, a jacuzzi. I, yeah. I probably know the answer to this question. Did you guys ever watch the TLC um, reality show? It only went on for one year where Adam Carolla builds a house. No. And it's with like all of his old I construction watched, buddies. I remember, the, I remember the ads for that and no. making fun of it, but I never actually watched the, it. I remember the one where he was like chasing down like bad contracts. Oh, yeah, to, to catch one. a contractor. No, this one was before that. Yeah. Him and his, uh, his okay. like best friend Ray from when he was 20. I, I think like Ray, Ray was the guy that shit in his ornamental popcorn tin or maybe adam Romano. carolla would shit in his okay. ad it's been a while it's anyways <laughs> um one of adam carolla's inventions that he was really proud of that he is like installed in his own fucking mansion in la that he also put into this house that he's renovating is a shoot for recycling and it's just like a little slide Ooh, okay. so instead of having bottles and cans like you know acquire inside of his house mm-hmm. it just goes directly into a blue bin outside <laughs> Cool. That's pretty cool. I, uh, you never see dumb waiters. Cartoons are full every, of dumb waiters. Every time waiters. I go to the damn restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta awesome. yell at them. Oh, yeah. I went to a friend's, like, cabin, and they had one of those, but it was, like, outside on the top part of the deck, and it went down, and, like, so you would just have to throw it in there, and then the can at the bottom. That's a great cabin it, Never feature. inside the house. Yeah, Alex, it was really nice. I knew an old lady once. We were at the, uh, we were at the shrine of... Our Lady of the Snows in Belleville, Illinois. <laughs> there was this old lady that was from Pena, Illinois, which is like a middle of nowhere corn cornfield town, you know. And she was like the ex mayor's wife. She was like ninety, and she called the elevator there the dumb waiter. And I'm like, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's she crazy. Told to, she told me to help her find the dumb waiter, and I'm like, you got to help me <laughs> with what Figure that word what is. Fu- <laughs> Michael, I thought you said you were at the shrine of That's Our the type Lady of person Peace. Is spending more. <laughs> I fucking wish. <laughs> yeah, they love that band. Yeah, I was I was praying that would to be rain. In Canada. I was praying to rain Mida for some good <laughs> shit to happen to me. We ah uh, man, now, I, I've never I seen a house piece, like, with a dumb waiter. Fourteen hours ago, Wait, I've been to like they built Eurodryro is this restaurant in Akron. And it's like a pizza place and like also a bar. 
And their downtown, by, across from the university, was their old building. It's a fucking and GTA the, ass name. Yeah, Euro General. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they call it Gyro. Euro, not, they don't say, what a piss off. Like, they don't say Euro. Yeah, yeah, of course they don't. Like, I say Euro. It's even but funnier they say that gyro. it's even so, more so. GTA to be Euro Gyro. But they they had some of the best pizza and Euros the, when their original restaurant, because the original restaurant you'd walk in and it was just like one story. And there's guys in the back and they're cutting the meat and they're smoking cigarettes and <laughs> it's stunk in there. But like their food is really good. Not a place you like want to think about what you're eating. But then they train change into this like hip bar um, and they had a first floor and then the second floor. And like they had to put a dumbwaiter in to get food to the second floor. So anytime you ordered food on the second floor, you would just see like someone pulling on like the <laughs> chain and like your food would get up. Oh, so cool. I love that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But it was just like interesting. Very hipster though. But it, it just, it became one of those, like, I don't know. I think it's still there. Like I haven't been to like downtown or like university of Akron and almost a it decade. It's now. not mechanical. I might've been, I don't know, but I just remember in my head. I remember someone pulling on it. Well, hold on. Let's call him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's call him right now. Pause. Everybody pause. Yeah, I need to talk you to the dumbwaiter. Well, actually, I can which do it. Which one? Because you only, need, you only need one party's consent recording conversations in North Carolina. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's why I don't do a lot of prank calls now, because uh, it's harder to record them now. When I was in Vermont, uh, that's a one-party state, and I would be calling other one-party states, but now it's so like... I actually have another crazy law that just went into effect in North Carolina. Uh, back in September, they signed this bill, and any website that would feature adult content, you have to confirm that you're 18 and up. And it's not enough to just click a button because they said, no, 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 that's not safe. That's not safe. So now what you have to do if you want to access a site like Pornhub, mm -hmm. well, Pornhub totally closed it down. You can't access Pornhub at all in North Carolina unless you have a VPN because they want to do a biometric scan. <laughs> You have to either scan your ID or scan your face, and they confirm it and you save it to their system. That, that is you are so weird. weird. That's so it's weird. insane, right? And so Pornhub like doesn't work in North Carolina. Like you can't go on there. And I think some other sites now are like you have to log in and you have to basically create an account and then scan your ID or scan your face with your camera so they can confirm that you are over 18. How do these fucking freaks that want these laws in place think that's better? I have no idea. They're, they're so like weird. the ones no that are idea. afraid of that type of shit in the first place. They're the ones that think like they're going to get fed a microchip secretly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Jar -Jar It really Rome. is. It seems like it's the crazy. VPN companies are, are making these laws happen. <laughs> it's like how TurboTax lobbies the government to make it stay hard <laughs> to file your taxes. I think yeah. NordVPN is probably paying all these states off and saying, Surf shark is everything. to blame. Dude, they need to take control of that. Did you hear uh, they finally revised the FAFSA one? Did they? The FAFSA one went down from like 170 questions to 18. <laughs> Isn't that insane? That's, that's so wild. Much, that's all they needed, though. It's fucking FAFSA. Why do you need to yeah. know someone's fucking family history? I don't know. That's crazy. That, it, like, I've done fast. I used to have to apply for every new semester. Yeah. That shit fucking yeah, sucked my ass. It was such a drag. There were that, literally like, semesters I, I didn't go to school because I didn't want to do that fucking paperwork. Yeah, I'm, I'll right? say it. I know. I'll yeah, say it. I, I'm, I'm with you. There was times where my, like, when I was like 18, 19, my dad was like, you got to fucking fill that out now. It's due now. God, and I was like, it's too long. So familiar. <laughs> my dad was like, my, if you don't, my dad filled mine if out. If you don't get that filled out, I'm kicking you out. I'm like, you're not. Yeah. You're not, bud. Yeah. <laughs> you're not kick me out. Me. For us non Amerifats, <laughs> I Googled it. It's like student yeah. loan or like. Yeah, debt. financial yes. aid. Yeah, exactly. Financial aid. Financial shit. aid, basically to see what you qualify for. Like, and they ask you like, how much do your parents make, and then how much do you make, and like to base whether or not they'll give you like a Pell Grant. I think it's even which fewer like, than eighteen questions, by the way. I think it's like yeah, 10 uh, something. A Pell Grant is just a, a loan you don't have to pay back, but it's like you it's know, free money. Two, it's like two thousand nice. dollars. So it's not usually much, and yes, then but they you, give you. You get sometimes you get that check after that, and you get to just spend it on whatever. Oh, for sure. Money, money, money. Then, then, then they give you the subsidized versus unsubsidized loans, and like, so it's just it's a whole thing of way to don't like, take put out you loans. Debt. By the way, <laughs> if you don't have to, don't get the financial aid, get the the Pell Grant. Don't take out loans. Yeah, if you if you, if you can go to community yeah, college. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, go to absolutely go to community college, man. 
unless I wish unless I the did. paperwork's too hard, then you could take a semester yeah, off. Yeah, well then, you know what? Don't do it. College is a scam. Uh, what you should do is invest. I would hey, keep grinding high school, invest. honestly. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, from the same. I'm a, I'm a dropout from the same community college as the, the creator of Vine and HQ Trivia, who died. Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. Home. Macomb Community College for the same Maconium time I did. Macomb Community. Let's he go. Was a year younger than Macomb, me. Yeah, Macomb. Why did they get rid of HQ Trivia? Um, they, it, he died. Like, <laughs> like almost it made literally. no money. Well, that wasn't. Yeah, it stopped. It stopped that wasn't the like, host that died, right? No, no, no. That guy stopped being the host though a while before it actually died, oh. and yeah, it did stop being profitable because shit changed. Yeah. Okay, and like also, they're, they're like it's just one of those things. Like, start, I believe that's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, they, it was they low, put all that PC money into it. Yeah, yeah, and like nobody was really doing it, and like it didn't it was make fucking, money. How does it? I think if it came it back, I think if it came back now, it'd be fucking hot again. By the way, yeah, yeah it has. It you, would. you have to get people talking about it. But if it's but like every also, day, but, uh, do, but dude, also, people, it's just doing that. The world fucking used to DC stop. Thing. The world used to stop for people at six p.m. or whatever yeah. to play that shit. My my brother in law would like was obsessed with I it. I have friends like, that they, won him, significant money. Him and my brother. Him and my brother would came down one time, and like we would be like out, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I got to play this. I got to do this." But again, like you, you look at that and it's just like, how are they making money? What do they make money off of? Yeah, there weren't they, ads. I don't think. I don't think so. Like maybe, maybe there. No, there definitely wasn't. Could you like, like buy said, back I, in or something? I think they I guess. had no I plan know. of how to grow it, and they ran out of VC money. Yeah, yeah they just, that's the thing. They figured we'll figure it out later. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll put ads on gonna, it or charge people or something. I wonder what that host is up to now, though, because that guy was fucking to make some money. That guy was like one of those popular people of whatever that year was, 2015 or was whatever? Was it 2016? Wow, that was like 2017, 2018? wasn't it? 2017? 2017, 2018. I think it happened right after Vine sort of popped off, too. Because I was, I was in Raleigh, so that would have been 2017, okay. 2018. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Sure. But like, yeah, it's just, I just look at those things and it's just, how do you think you, like, what, what's your plan for making money? What's the? Don't I think a lot of these on? places just get their initial capital and they don't really think about yeah. yeah. The after sure figure that out. I mean, later. I get like why, but I don't know. To me, I'm just like how. It sucks though mean? when you have like almost just... a good idea like that, you know? Yeah. I, I was you just talking about this with a uh, half of a good idea. <laughs> I was talking about this with our man Rainbow yesterday, literally HQ trivia, because mm-hmm. he was trying to remember the name of it. Because he he's always got his head going through ideas like that. You know what Rainbow's job used to be? Hmm. I, I don't know if it's leaking too much, but whatever. He won't care. He used to do. He used to be one of the people that would make the, uh, the Snapchat stories, like the featured oh, okay. ones, the really annoying, yeah. eye catching ones. Like, but mm-hmm. that also makes him like be able to make a fucking. He can make like a joke shitting on someone, like a real, just a funny one as a meme, but like very high quality in like forty five seconds. It's fucking, that that guy is, that kid's got a a social media brain on him. It's insane, fucking Zoomer brain. Ah, uh, ah, oh, couldn't do it. You know a fact I learned today? A What's verifiable that? fact? The founder of Lululemon named it that to make it confusing for Japanese people. Yeah. Oh my god. That's, that's, that's so true. Fucked. Well, you see, it's Vancouver based, right? And he's like a racist guy. Yeah. Yeah. Vancouver based is his other company. <laughs> that's so fucked. I do. <laughs> so, I do love. <laughs> it's almost funny. It's just. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny it's in like a funny. sense where like a. If, if it was said in like a hot shot, like a Mel Brooks movie. Mm-hmm. It's not funny, but I, it's it's funny in like a 1971. Because he keeps, because he's been like, he just keeps saying like racist and like anti just everything, and like they just no have fat to keep being like, yeah, they just have to keep being like, we don't like him. He's not. Yeah, he he's not our he, owner. He quit two years founder. ago. Yeah, we we are distancing this ourselves. Plus yoga pants. <laughs> so awesome. He's just sitting around, is, I mean, sitting around being a dick wearing tight oh, ass man. black yoga pants. He, he's got such a I, fucking <laughs> villain name too, Chip Wilson. Ooh. Chip Wilson. Chip Wilson. Chip Wilson sounds I, like a, the Giants would draft him as a quarterback. He, what is Chip <laughs> short for? Chipper uh, Dennis, Chipper. apparently. <laughs> Chip's Dennis, always just his actual isn't for name. Chester? I feel like Chip's always just a nickname that people yeah. get, and there's always named something. Got a yeah. chip on How do you brother. get that name? There's see, Chip, there's Char- Charles, in. Richard, or Christopher. Okay, what? That, but that, oh, makes... Sorry, that's according to. Hold on, that's a, according to Quora. Oh, because <laughs> that's the first so one. Jack. Sugar like, from wrong. store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so wrong. On the founding Sugar of Lululemon, store. in a 2004 interview, he said the reason the Japanese liked my former skateboard brand, Homeless, 
was because it had an L in it and a Japanese marketing firm wouldn't come up with a brand name with an L in it. L is not in their vocabulary. It's a tough pronunciation for them. So I thought next time I have a company, I'll make a name that has three L's and see if I can get three times the money. It's kind of exotic for them. I was playing with L's and I came up with Lululemon. It's funny to watch them try and say it. Dude, God I meant. Why would you would say, that say that in an well, interview? I don't know why you would say that. That reminds me of Aaron. It reminds uh, when I was at the I was selling weed at the Magic Grand Prix in Chicago ten years ago, in May mm-hmm. and uh, or in June, and uh, I met Saito, who's a Magic Pro, and he's also the owner of the Japanese card store Hare Ruya, and <laughs> spelled like that in English. H R H R H A R E R U Y A, Hare Ruya, oh. and he, it's just like the reverse of that. Where he's like, we don't have L's, but I want it to be Hallelujah, so it's this. And it's uh, it's like one of the biggest card stores. This guy has had some opinions. 2009 on a mm-hmm. blog post on their website about how Lululemon came into being, he said, uh, women's lives changed immediately. Men's lives didn't change, however, and they continued to search for stay-at-home wife like their mothers. Men did not know how to relate to the new female. Thus, uh, came the era of divorces. In the same blog post, he also shared his views on birth control writing. Females no longer had to make relationships work because with birth control came a sense of financial and life control. A sense of equality was established because women no longer had to relinquish their independence to a male power. That's so awesome. Okay. Um, Who's asking so this guy this shit? Me. And then on a, in a book he wrote, he, in a book titled Little Black Stretchy Pants, he wrote that... Um, That's his book? Um, he's not necessarily opposed to child labor as, quote... Working young is excellent training for life in North America. I noticed that there were some kids not made for school who dropped out with nowhere to go. In Asia, if a kid was not school material, he or she learned to trade and contributed to their family. It was work or starve. I like the working alternative. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Sounds um, like a cool guy. Real, real quick, I want to tell you guys a cool fact of the, fact of the week I found. And now mm-hmm. I realize why we have that person chat named Private Voitech. Voitek was a bear, a Syrian brown bear, that was found in the mountains of Iran by a Polish uh, outfit that was there for World War II. And uh, they, in order to provide for his rations and transportation, he was eventually enlisted officially as a soldier with rank of private. It was subsequently promoted to corporal. <laughs> and he accompanied the, the outfit during the bulk of uh, their stay in Italy, serving with the sec- 22nd Artillery Supply Company. And during the Battle of Monte Cassino, he helped move crates of ammunition, <laughs> carried them, and uh, became a, a celebrity with visiting allied generals and statesmen. And he, he lived out his life in the uh, Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland. There's, um, it's fucking it's crazy. It's funny, actually. There's a, in the Science Center in downtown Raleigh, there's a story on the top floor, there's a story of a boa constrictor that soldiers in Vietnam had found and, like, rescued and, like, basically did the same thing where they just because they they just were like oh that's cool and like well, basically became part of the platoon and then came home and like you <laughs> they could just do whatever took back them home. then there was uh yeah you could there was that bear that um was the the inspiration for winnie the pooh that got brought back from i think the first world war by that um it was a calvary uh medic or something and he brought this bear yeah the, the Winnie. That is a Winnipeg. that is a heritage the, moment that I saw on TV oh, yeah. all the time growing up. That, I bet. But do you know in '04 Michael Fassbender played the guy in a movie? That's so weird. Oh. And he was with a real bear in that movie. Like he got to hang around this bear, <laughs> these three bear cubs during the whole time shooting. There's all these pictures all over of Michael Fassbender with all these black bear cubs. But then yeah, they got a statue of him and his bear at the uh, Winnipeg Zoo. Oh, very cool. Congratulations to him. Yep. And A. A. Milne the the Winnie the Pooh author saw the bear at the zoo and was inspired. I like that story. He plagiarized the bear. <laughs> he stole the bear's life story. <laughs> uh, the that. bear Zoo. got no money from that. <laughs> to this day. True. <laughs> and he still has no pants. Well, that's, the, that's fucked up. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Yep. We love you. Subscribe to bears. the Patreon. Check out find, bears. Try to find one and Check raise it. Check out Little Stretchy yeah, Black feed them. Pants Leave food by out. Chip Wilson. If you're... Little yeah, stretchy Carolina, black bear. Do not check out. Check out Harry Ruru and Ruru Ramen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.